Hello and welcome. In this video, I'd like to introduce the second release of Connector's integration with Blender. Since the first release, we've received very helpful feedback from our users and are happy to say that we've implemented a lot of the requested features and streamlined the integration even further. The functionality that I'll demonstrate works with the latest release of Blender 2.90 and is also backwards compatible with Blender's long-term support version 2.83. The new integration lays the groundwork for the long-term future. It offers a simplified interface, better user experience, and improved performance. Now, as development progresses into the 2.9 and 3.0 Blender series, we will continue to update this integration with Blender to ensure users can continue to use Connector's asset management system with all future releases of Blender. To demonstrate the functionality, I currently have my interface split with Connector on the left and Blender on the right. And I want to start out by showing you how you can quickly save assets from Blender to Connector. So here I have a scene that I've started to design in Blender. And now I'm going to save some of these assets to Connector so I can use them in future scenes. Now as long as you have Connector installed, you'll have a few more options in the right-click context menu. And that's these three options here at the top of the menu. Now to start out, if you want to save this entire file to Connector, you can use this Add Current File option. That opens up Blender's file browser. And here on the left, we have all of Connector's root folders that we can see. So this will match all of the existing Connector folders that you have in your installation of Connector. So for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and save these assets to a folder that I've created called Active Project. Now here on the right, we have a few options. We can determine how we want the render preview to be created. We can render the preview with the Cycles rendering engine, Eevee, or if we don't want a preview at all, we can just select Disabled. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just use Cycles. Next, we have a note about what's going to be saved to Connector. So currently, everything from the currently open file will be added to Connector as a single asset. Then finally, for this option, we have the ability to include or disable different types of objects that we don't want to save to Connector. So in this example, if we don't want to save the camera and lights, we can hold down Shift and disable these options. Then finally, we can give the asset a name down here at the bottom and then click Add Asset. This may take a few moments here depending on your computer, but once it's finished here, if we go to the Active Project category, we can see that it has saved this entire scene to Connector. Now you may want to just save specific assets from this file. So let's go ahead and just save the wall art that we have and this floor lamp. So I've held down shift and selected these two items and I'm going to right click. And here in the add selected objects, we have the ability to add these as a single asset or as multiple assets. For right now, I'm going to select as multiple assets. Here we have the same option where we can determine what root folder we want to save these to. You can determine the render preview and also the note about what information it's going to save to connector. In this instance, since we're saving multiple objects, we don't have the ability to enter in a file name because it's going to use the name of the object that we're saving. So we'll go and click add assets. And so since I've selected save as multiple assets, you can see that we get a preview for each individual asset that we had selected. Now there may be instances to where you want to save objects as a single asset. For example, here on the table, I have these books and rather than saving each one of these independently and then restacking them in every single scene, I can just select all of the objects that I want to save as a single asset and then use the as single asset option. Since we're just saving one asset, here we can give it a name. So this is going to be Stacked Books, and we'll click Add Asset. And now we have all of those assets saved into one file within Connector. So as we can see, saving objects is very easy to do. Next, we can save materials. And so here if we select this sofa, and we right click, here in the Add Materials from Selection menu, we could add the materials as a single asset or as multiple assets. In this instance, let's go and select as multiple assets. Of course, we're given the same options to select a folder, determine what preview we want, and then here in this note, it says each of the three selected materials will be saved to Connector as separate assets. And so for this sofa asset, there's three different materials applied to it. Again, we can't give it a name because it's going to use the name of the material that's currently assigned in Blender. But for now, we'll go and click Add Assets. And as you can see, it saved the sofa dark fabric, the sofa dark wood, and the sofa light fabric. If we were to use the other option, 
So here, use the add a single asset. We'll go and give this a name and we'll just call this sofa materials and then click add asset. Here you can see it's generated one asset in connector. And if we double click on this, that opens up a preview where we can see the different assets that have been saved into the single asset. Now, finally, we have the ability to save collections from Blender as well. So here I'm going to split my space and open up the outliner. We can see that I have this scene organized into different collections. And so if I just want to save the furniture collection, I can select that, right click, and use the add collection option. Like all the other options, we can select the root folder that we want to save it to, select the preview, and for collections, we also have the ability to disable specific types. For now, I'm going to leave these all selected, and I'll keep the name as furniture and add the asset. And as we can see, it's added that entire collection here to connector. So as you can see, saving assets is very easy to do. And now that we have some assets saved to connector, let me demonstrate how quick and easy it is to add these back into the scene to quickly design scenes within Blender. For right now, I'm just going to disable these different collections. So I have an empty room to work with. And for now, I'll also collapse the outliner. So now when we drag an asset from connector into Blender, we have some new options. Blender already comes with the ability to open, link, and append, but Connector adds these two menus on the top, link and place, and append and place. And so you'll notice you can link or append objects, materials, or collections. Now the placement method and linking appending work essentially the same way. The difference is linking the asset requires less memory, but changes cannot be made because it just adds a reference from the original asset file. Appending makes a copy of the asset and adds it to the scene, allowing you to adjust geometry, materials, or any other information about the asset. And so with this furniture asset, here if I select Append and Place, we know that this was just the single collection of furniture that we added, so we can select Collections. And now it's appended the information, and now we're in this placement mode, giving you a very easy way to determine where this asset should be placed within the scene. And here when I left click, you'll notice that the command is recursive, so I can continue to place these assets wherever I need to, or I can type escape or right click to cancel. And so you'll notice that with these objects that were in the collection that we just appended, I have the ability to go into edit mode. So I can continue to make modifications to this mesh, change anything I need about this object. And so now if I select these stacked books here, and instead of appending them, I go into link, and here we'll just link the objects. Now I have the same functionality of being able to determine where I want this positioned. And if I left click, I can continue to place more assets, but I'll go ahead and escape for right now. And now if I select one of these books and try to access edit mode, you'll notice that I cannot access edit mode because this object is linked from its original file. So linking or appending objects or collections work in the same way. We can determine where they need to be positioned, left click to place them, and escape to cancel. Of course, we can do the same thing for this floor lamp here. Now, if you want to add materials from connector into Blender, here, let's go ahead and switch over to my materials category. Here, we can select one of these materials, drag it into the scene, and whether we choose link and place or append and place, the placement will work the same way. For right now, let's go and select link, select materials. Now here, you can determine what, that we're in this assignment mode. So based on the object that I currently have my cursor on, if I left click, that will assign that material to that object. Now, like we noticed before, this sofa had multiple materials assigned to it. And so here, if we select the sofa light fabric, and we'll select materials. Here, if we select on the sofa, we're given this dialog box because there's several different material slots that are assigned. And so if we just want to replace the dark fabric, we can do that. And you'll notice that just places those materials. Now, it's important to remember that this is just a second iteration of the connector integration with Blender. We have many plans for future development and are looking forward to hearing more feedback from our users. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this demonstration. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We hope you enjoy using Connector with Blender.